بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم اللہ صلی اللہ محمد ولی محمد ویلکم ویورس ٹو مائی چینل ان مائی لاسٹ ویڈیو آئی ڈسکس دا تھری اسپیسیفک رولز آف نالج لیڈرس اسٹریٹجک لیڈرس کور لیڈرس اینڈ ٹیم لیڈرس فرام دیز تھری رولس ٹو ور ڈسکسڈ ان پریویس سیشن سو اف یو وانٹ ٹو نو اباؤٹ اسٹریٹجک اینڈ کور لیڈرس یو کین واچ مائی پریویس ویڈیو دا لنک آف دیٹ سیشن از پرووائڈیڈ ان دا ڈسکرپشن باکس Today we shall see how knowledge leaders can contribute to lead the knowledge teams. So let's start the session. Initially we shall know how the team leaders lead knowledge teams. Then I shall highlight the dimensions of how the self-managed knowledge teams work. And then viewers, we shall explore what the virtual teams are and how do they work. So let's begin with the role of knowledge team leaders by leading the knowledge teams. Knowledge workers operate in dynamic and complex environment with diverse and unpredictable role, tasks and outcomes. They need to communicate, share and work closely with others, tapping different areas of intellectual capital. Each individual knowledge workers need to develop some leadership capabilities in order to provide opportunities for others to draw their expertise, share their own knowledge and provide collaborative opportunities in work environment. Knowledge workers have some leadership capabilities in order to provide opportunities for others to draw their expertise, share their own knowledge and provide collaborative opportunities. Knowledge workers rarely operate in isolation. In knowledge intensive communities, knowledge teams are integral to the work settings. Teams may operate in many different ways, from service or management teams to operational groups, for example, project, production or action teams. They have a common purpose which shape their processes and members are interdependent in their work. Increasing reliance on knowledge workers has led to the development of knowledge teams. Each member may be selected for particular set which is unique and will complement the knowledge of other members of the team. These knowledge workers may be highly experienced and informed. They may be open to new ideas or resistant to building new perceptions which alter their own experiences. Leaders of new teams need to draw the different realities into a common focus who explain the outcomes to be achieved and build accountability to the team. The valuing of diversity and recognition of skills and talents are key leadership strategies along with enabling group members to build both competence and capability. Charles Villon, a professor and author, suggested different team leadership strategies should be used at different team development phases. The early phase may require confident and authoritative team leader who provides vision, reassurance and positive feedback at the same time facilitating open and inclusive discussion of goals, values and strategies. Team awareness becomes an important indicator of maturity. Knowledge teams which can monitor and cor- correct dysfunctional processes are well led both by leaders and by the members. The next role of the knowledge team leader is to lead the self-managed knowledge team. As team mature, they may evolve into self-managed knowledge teams. Generally, members of these teams share the leadership. For example, if a person is a part of team because of his or her strategic expertise, initial planning might be led by the person's insights and guidance. As the team move towards the implementation phase, the knowledge project manager might assume more leadership. The importance of establishing some basic rules which explore the type of culture and interaction which should operate is essential. These ground rules serve to identify the focus and values of the group. Knowledge teams also need to recognize that there will be times when divergence is called for and other times when convergence is necessary. Let's discover what do divergence and convergence mean. Divergence occurs when creativity, innovation and expansion of idea is required. Convergence is necessary when process need to be carried out and completed. Teams may need to be trained in both problem solving and project management skills to operate effectively in these diverse methodologies. Knowledge teams also need to be realistic about their capabilities of achieving the desired outcomes. Knowledge teams may have the potential to create projects of much greater sophistication and complexity and artistry than can be achieved in the time and budget allowed. Setting new goals, 
and standards enables the team to strive towards higher performance. Membership roles should be clearly identified and coordinated to increase effective interchange. All right, viewers, the next important role of the team leader is to lead the virtual knowledge teams. Knowledge workers increasingly rely on electronic collaboration to work on core knowledge projects. Collaborators separated by time and distance may rely on teleconferencing, electronic brainstorming, group display screens, discussion threads, and net meetings. Virtual knowledge teams are formed when there are physical boundaries which must be overcome. Two well-known authors, Dwartre and Sridhar, noted that technology is only one of the seven critical factors which make virtual teams effective. They described those human resource policies, leadership, and member training and development, the team and organization process, the underlying institutional culture, leadership, and leader and team member capabilities as the other six critical factors. Team members in these settings needs to be conscious of progress monitoring. Virtual knowledge teams need to maintain communication. Regular meetings should be established to ensure accountability and to maintain group cohesion. Knowledge team members must be sensitive to emerging issues and help other members resolve concerns in a constructive and open manner. Strong leadership is needed to maintain virtual team cohesion. Frequent communication and connection to establish an effective telepresence is necessary to retain the group identity. The lack of physical connection leads to higher reliance on communication tools to help in knowledge interchange. Members need to work hard to sustain their knowledge teams. A knowledge sharing culture is important to these teams. Members need to be conscious of their obligations to other members and to make an additional effort to support the development of inclusive all right viewers here we have come to the end of this session and the topic about knowledge leaders i hope i have delivered justly and you have acquired some new insights and information about this topic so let's have a short recap of the whole topic the knowledge leaders as we have come to know, the knowledge leadership is essential to knowledge management. So specific roles may be allocated to support knowledge management. These include the strategic knowledge leaders, sometimes called the chief knowledge leaders, as well as the core leaders who are responsible for managing different organizational units or groups. Each knowledge worker may assume a leadership role in the course of working with other colleagues as an individual's expertise may assume greater importance at a particular time. The team leaders, as far as knowledge team leader is concerned, knowledge teams require different forms of leadership depending on the, their stage of development. When new groups form, the knowledge leaders play a significant role, enabling the development of collective understanding and agreement about goals and priorities. As the group becomes a self-managing team, the leadership role decreases as each member contributes according to the team needs at the time. Virtual teams require additional support when new members are introduced so that standards and basic principles are clearly understood. The various forms of leadership and knowledge interactions means that organizations should be very focused on selecting the right people to join their community. For this session, I'm, I want to share some very thoughtful and worth sharing piece of quotation delivered by Mr. Nelson Mandela, who said, and I quote it, I have spent more than 20 years in prison. Then one night, I decided to surrender my signing all the terms and conditions of government, but suddenly I thought about Imam Hussain and Karbala movement, and Imam Hussain gave me strength to stand for right of freedom and liberation, and I did. Here again is a great example of knowledge gain and share, the knowledge which Nelson Mandela acquired by knowing the personality and life story of Imam Hussain and Karbala movement. That knowledge gave him the right path to walk, right thought to enlighten, and right decision to embrace. This actually is the power of knowledge and awareness, which sometimes take us to the ultimate heights of greatness. All right, five viewers, hopefully this video will be beneficial for you. And I am really grateful 
grateful to you for watching this video if you find it useful then please do share this video with others as learning is an ongoing process and sharing knowledge or any information is the essence of learning inshallah in my next upcoming video i shall share an overall view of knowledge management development and here is a reminder to share and subscribe my channel spread the light so see you again till then have a happy healthy and safe life thank you